This video was brought to you by GeneralPack.com, making power systems intuitive, open, and free to everyone, everywhere. Consider subscribing and supporting through Patreon.com slash GeneralPack. This is the mechanism for you to support us financially so we can continue making high quality power system video tutorials. Our corporate sponsor for this topic is Illumiax.com from Seattle, Washington. Contact them for industrial and commercial power system studies. This is part 3A of the series on fault analysis in power systems where we will discuss three line to ground faults. In other words, we will see how three phase current and voltage quantities are calculated for three line to ground faults. In the previous part, we talked about per unit systems and sequence network diagrams. In part three of this series, meaning part 3a, part 3b, 3c, and so forth, we will explain the math calculations by hand for current and voltage quantities for various types of faults, including the three line to ground, the one line to ground, the line to line, and the two line to ground faults. So let's continue with our first example, which was introduced in the previous parts. And mind you, this is going to be a long tutorial, so please bear with us here. But we have a three-phase synchronous generator having a short circuit capability of 600 MVA short circuit connected to a 115 kV bus. A delta Y transformer rated at 30 MVA connects the 115 kV bus to a 13.8 kV bus and has a positive and zero sequence impedance of 10% at 30 MVA. Step one of our calculations asks us to convert the system into per unit values and that's exactly what we did in part 2b of our series. Here we draw the same networks again. Next we move to step number two which will ask us to identify the type of fault involved. Now as mentioned before we have a three line to ground fault which is a symmetrical fault type meaning it's a balanced fault. Now this type of fault only produces positive sequence quantities and does not produce any negative or zero sequence quantities which are currents and voltage values. So this is very important for us to keep in mind. Next we move on to step number three, which asks us to make a unfaulted sequence network from the per unit converted system in step number one. Now these are individual sequence network diagrams which were converted in part 2c of the series and here we draw the same networks below. So we have the positive sequence network, we have the negative sequence network, and we have the zero sequence network. Again, please review part 2C if, if you'd like to know more details. And then in step number four, we will draw the faulted sequence network, which is interconnected based on the type of fault that we have. So given that this is a three line to ground fault, uh, which produces only positive sequence current, and voltage quantities, we will only have a positive sequence network uh, and that positive sequence network is going to be connected for a in during the faulted uh, condition. Now this is pretty trivial here but the diagram shown represents that positive sequence network diagram and we don't have any other interconnections. But this step is important to realize because in the other faults uh, we do interconnect the individual sequence networks. Now towards step five we will hand calculate the sequence network quantities. Since we have a perfectly balanced three line to ground fault only positive sequence fault current will be calculated from this faulted network. And again, this is the positive sequence network diagram. So as we analyze the faulted sequence network diagram, it's clear that we simply need to divide the source voltage in per unit values to the total positive sequence impedance, which is also in per unit values. The source voltage here is one per unit and the sum of the series impedance becomes 0 0.05 plus 0.1 to be J.15 per unit. After dividing the source voltage with the total per unit impedance, we get the positive sequence current as J6.67 per unit values. Now remember, this is complex math with imaginary numbers, and although it may not seem important, the negative signs uh, does make a difference here. Now in step number six, we will calculate the three phase current and voltage values. 
meaning we need to convert the per unit quantities to phase quantities. This step is going to be long and complicated. So understanding the fundamentals of symmetrical components, now there's a link in the description section below, is really critical. Uh, so let's continue here. To calculate the base value of current, we simply divide the base value of power, which is 30 MVA, with the voltage on the bus, which is 13.8 kV, and there's a square root of 3 factor there. Now this is very similar to a three-phase power formula, but solving for the current instead. Now the base value current is now 1255 amperes. Now we just simply multiply the per unit values that we calculated earlier for the sequence component to the base value that we calculated here. And we get 8,367 amps at the angle of 90 degrees as the positive sequence current values in ampere quantities. So this is the positive sequence current values in ampere quantities. I repeated that again just to solidify that point. Uh, the other two sequence components, which is the negative sequence and the zero sequence, uh, remember they will be zero in a perfectly balanced three line to ground fault. Now in step number six, we need to convert the sequence components into phase current quantities. These are currents in amperes that are actually flowing in line A, line B, and line C in a three phase power system. To convert to a phase current quantities, we will use three standard equations that were derived from the phase values to sequence component transformation matrix. Now this was already discussed in the previous videos in the series on symmetrical components, so we're not going to delve into it too much here. But we quote the three equations as the following. Now we note here that the negative and zero sequence components are zero because it's a perfectly balanced three-phase fault. So we simply eliminate those quantities, we can cross them out, uh, which simplifies our equations quite a bit for a three-phase fault. And here we also have to note that the A operators equals the following. From here, all we need to do is just plug in all of these math calculations that we did previously. So we plug in the values of A and A squared and positive sequence current of 8,367 amps at the angle of negative 90 degrees into the three equation, and that's going to give us the current values for phase A, B, and C. These are the line values. So phase A current being 8,367 amps at angle negative 90 degrees, phase B current being 8,367 at angle 150 degrees, and phase C current being 8,367 at the angle of 30 degrees. Now to summarize this entire example, from step one to six, we looked at the system and converted it into per unit values. And then we took the unfaulted sequence network diagrams from it. We drew the positive, negative, zero sequence component. We identified the type of fault it was. And then we eliminated the negative and zero sequence components altogether because it was a perfectly balanced three phase fault. And then we converted the per unit values into sequence component values in amperes. And then we converted the sequence component values in amperes to actual phase or line current values uh, for the three phase system. That is the summary of the six steps. Now, if we wanted to calculate the voltage quantities, how would we do that? Well, it's very simple and it takes uh, the same form as the six steps, uh, but we will summarize it very quickly below. To calculate the three-phase voltage quantities is not very exciting for a perfectly balanced three-phase fault because we know that at the point of the fault on the 13.8 kV bus, we should expect zero quantities for phase A, B, and C, voltage quantities. And so here's how it works mathematically. So the positive sequence voltage at the 13.8 kV bus is going to equal one at the angle of zero degrees, which is our pre-fault voltage or source voltage, minus the total impedance between the source and the point of the fault, which is J.15 per unit, times the current that's flowing through it, which is J.6.667 per unit. Now, that 
source voltage minus the voltage drop across the total impedance, if you calculate that out, that simply equals zero per unit. Okay, so again, the negative and zero sequence components are already zero because it's a perfectly balanced system. And the positive sequence component at the point of the fault on the 13.8 kV bus is also zero as we uh, point out with this calculation. To convert these quantities to phase quantities or phase voltages is really trivial because it's going to equal zero as shown below. And remember, these are the same matrix as the current quantities. Uh, we plug in the values and solve for the math. Voltage on A, B, and C on a 13.8 kV bus are simply zero. So that's the bonus step in between step six and step seven. Now in step seven, we can easily take the current and voltage quantities on the low voltage side of the transformer, which is the 13.8 kV side, and we could easily reflect that quantity on the high voltage side. However, we will do this step uh, in another fault that is more useful. So in the next video, we will calculate the line to line fault and follow the same, same methodology. If this video tutorial was useful for you, please consider subscribing to generalpack.com and donating through patreon.com slash generalpack. Thank you.